Welcome to Consulting Unplugged. I'm Andrew Peck, your host. I am a dyed-in-the-wool entrepreneur and advisor to many top executives, companies, and innovators throughout the world. I'm looking forward to spending this time with you as we learn some pretty amazing lessons from emerging and seasoned entrepreneurs, innovators, and change makers. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join me on my Consulting Unplugged show. When you're done watching or listening, I hope you take a minute and write a quick review on whichever podcast platform you heard this show. Your insights will help others to be inspired and proactive about their business or career. Be sure to follow me on LinkedIn where I'm very active or Facebook under the name Andrew Peck. And please don't hesitate to subscribe to my Consulting Unplugged mailing and member group by visiting my platform, consultingunplugged.com where you will be the first to know about my upcoming podcasts, educational programs, tips, and tools for helping you become the best entrepreneur, innovator, and change maker that you can be. Thanks for participating, and don't forget to stay unplugged. Well, hello, everyone. This is Andrew Peck. I am so excited about introducing my next guest to you, Bob Doyle. Bob is best known as a featured expert in the film and book phenomena, The Secret. As a teacher who truly wants to help the masses, Bob strongly believes in presenting the law of attraction and related topics in a clear and scientific manner. Bob's number one goal is to help people enjoy their lives by giving them the tools they need to envision and sculpt a version of themselves that takes the action necessary to create whatever life they can imagine. Well, not only is he an amazing coach, speaker, and author, Bob is really funny, talented voiceover guy. He does some really interesting and, and creative and fun and, may I say, wacky kinds of things with technology to engage his audience. I'm so delighted to have Bob Doyle on Consulting Unplugged. Our mission is to help build the power skills of the next generation of entrepreneurs, innovators, and change makers. Well, talk about power skills. Oh my God, I am so delighted to invite, invite Bob Doyle, who's obviously best known for The Secret, the movie, the book, the sensation that that has created, and the millions that I know that he has influenced and inspired. But there's so many things, Bob, there's so many, like on your, your page, you've got the Bob Doyle show, you've got the VR, you've got the, you know, conscious living, the coaching. I'm, my God, it's just like uh, you're a jogger now. So I am so thrilled to have you uh, on my show today. I'm really excited. Welcome to Consulting Unplugged. Well, thanks, Andrew. It's great to be here. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yes. Well, listen, uh, you know, Casey Stengel, or maybe it was Satchel Page or somebody like that, some baseball player, uh, I think he said, you dance with what brung you. What I would be very interested in, I know my audience would be very curious as well, is what brought you to this stage? Uh, you know, earlier we were talking a little bit about uh, way back when, back in the 90s, which seems so long ago nowadays. I would like to hear, and I know my audience would like to hear a little bit about some of the, the journey that you've been on that has brought you to this stage at this point in time. In your okay, career. yeah. I've told this story a couple of times. I'll try and make it super, super short. I mean, because and take out all the stuff. But basically, I had always endeavored to be a broadcaster. And as you know, it is something that I'm doing now, uh, you know, through live streaming and all kinds of other things. But as a even as a young boy, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I went to school for it. I got my degree in it. And I started in the job world in radio. But and because I just wanted to express myself creatively, I'm basically a pretty silly person. And I was always, you know, into just trying to entertain, entertain, entertain. And so when I was doing radio back in the day, I mean, I was just, it was just your, your typical like sketches and voices and characters and just all that. I was just really playing, playing, playing. And then I went to Atlanta because I started in a small, you know, because I was college. Go to Atlanta, which is a major market. Well, I can't do any of that stuff. I have to read this card and that's what I do. You know, and it was like, ah, oh, this is so after a while that kind of got to me and, and I left radio and I just kind of started to search. It's like my whole life I knew I wanted to do this. And guess what? I don't, at least not right then, you know. Right. 
Um, so I jumped around from various careers, all of which had a little something where I felt like I could express myself creatively, computers and you know, multimedia was just getting started then. So it was a chance for me to kind of take my audio production skills and all that stuff to, you know, to a different platform and a different technology. So everything I did that didn't really stick, I think I took a little something from it, right? It's just kind of part of the journey that sure. one day resulted in, in, you know, just the perfect blend of skill sets and ahas and all of that. But, you know, long and short of it is I had, I had tried all sorts of professional endeavors on my own, trying to be an entrepreneur, because I knew I wasn't really the best employee because I just have this highly creative nature and I just want to do things my way. And I don't like people criticizing me, blah, blah, blah. Right. right. So I knew an entrepreneur was my, was my, future, but I was struggling. And because nothing I was doing was working, that's when I started kind of looking outside of like the logistic, tactical, why isn't, all, you know, everybody, thing I'm reading says this should be working. So then I started looking sort of more in the metaphysical, you know, uh, area, like there must be something I'm not seeing that is causing these results or lack thereof. And that's when I started learning about visualization and meditation and sort of advancing some sort of ideas that I'd already had from years ago, which is a whole different story about how everything is energy and all of that and all just kind of gelled and one thing led to another and I had some very big ahas around energy and my thoughts and the law of attraction and and all of it and it just kind of came together and I created my first program called Wealth Beyond Reason and at that point I wasn't touting myself as an expert or anything I was like a facilitator I've gathered this information I've gotten this out of it let me share it with you. But this is kind of key here to the story is that at some point I said, I got to, that's not who I need to be in this. If I'm going to have my dream, I need to be a much, play at a much bigger game. I need to redefine myself, not as somebody who just is, thinks this stuff is cool and is sharing it, but I need to be somebody who can communicate these principles to as many willing minds as possible. That was who I became. And so I said, I am a person who effectively communicates these principles to people who are willing to listen, basically. And the moment I made that declaration to myself, that's when the, the download started. I mean, you know how you just get into this flow and there's content, content, content. And so no longer was the program, because originally it was mostly other people's content that I'd put together. Now it was like just all this stuff that was flowing through and it became this monster. And then a few years later, Rhonda Byrne found that monster and said, I want that monster in my movie. <laughs> so, so that's how that happened. Then of course, you know, now I'm exposed to, as you say, millions, which still, I, to this day, I can't get my head wrapped around that piece, that millions have looked at this, even though it doesn't look the same anymore. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so that changed a lot. And, and you were talking about dance with the one that brung you. And that, that when things exploded and, uh, you know, I started getting approached from a business point of view, we can talk business now. I started right. getting, getting approached by all these marketers right, who saw an opportunity. Here, this film has exploded. They've got all the teachers. Now, these were internet marketers, not personal development people. And yeah. so they came in with all their internet marketing strategies, which worked for their audience and were pitching them to me and some others. And, and I was just sort of like, well, these are the experts. I, they must know what they're doing. Right. And so I went with a lot of their strategies and stuff, and it was the worst freaking business decision I ever made. Because, you know, now someone else is kind of writing my emails. We're doing strategies that mm, kind of like, I don't know about this. This doesn't feel quite right. Right. And I should have listened to all of that. And on top of all of that, I was dealing with this identity crisis because because who I am, who I am is more entertainment, silly. I, I mean, I like to communicate and teach, but I like to use humor and things like that. And after the secret, I felt like I needed to be something else. Because now here I'm alongside Bob Proctor, Jack Canfield, Mark, all these people who have been in this industry and in this conversation for years. I've been at three. And, and so now I felt like, well, I guess I better be more like them. And like the humor wouldn't work or that this is going to turn off my audience or all that. So that was, a, that was a few years of an ordeal of just sort of like, who do I got to be in this conversation? And what saved me was live streaming because that, that gave me this opportunity to broadcast, be super creative and use, uh, just use all of my skill sets and teach. And that's when I really found my groove. So that takes me from the beginning to basically where I am now, I guess. Yeah, I know. I love that. And thank you for sharing that because uh, what, what's interesting is uh, I, I talk a lot about uh, creativity and people think it's always something more artistic, but you had mm -hmm. obviously very sound foundational sort of technical skills of broadcasting. 
your voice. Uh, it's obvious. I, I love your voice. You, you can tell there's that, that uh, intonation. And we'll come back to some of the crazy, funny things that you do in your live streams uh, to manipulate your voice. I was showing my son, by the way, the, mm -hmm. the other night, and he's like, who is this guy? <laughs> I know. You know it's some really hilarious uh, uh, skits and sketches that you do. But so you had this foundation, but then it sounded like there was a moment in time that you kind of sort of started to find yourself, which then led to some success, which was obviously Rhonda Byrne and The Secret. But then in the midst of all that, you may, may have even, if I may say, lost yourself? Uh, yeah, oh, I'd say so, yeah. I mean, I there was this identity of Bob Doyle from The Secret that to this day follows me around. I mean, I get introduced like that. Right. Bob Doyle from The Secret. I'm like, well, I was Bob Doyle first. You know, um, but I mean, but I don't mean to seem ungrateful. And I really because it obviously was it was a lightning strike of opportunity. It was amazing. And it gave me the opportunity for tremendous personal growth myself and, and continues to, you know, as I as my message evolves and as she continues to put out work. And as I look back, I just recently did a whole Instagram series, uh, Instagram live series about would I still say that? And I went through the secret the book and I found all my little, uh, you know, italicized things that I was credited and read them and said, would I still say this today? Would I still use these words? Would I use this distinction? Would I? And it's probably maybe 50, 50, mm. something like that. So it was interesting to, to go back and, and it still is, you know, because as you know, my conversation now, well, for 20 years, it was law of attraction, vibration, energy, you know, kind of, it borders in a woo-woo conversation, which, you know, I endeavored to make as scientific and as grounded as possible. That was kind of what I was known for. But still, when we're talking about something like law of attraction and words like manifestation, there's a whole segment of the population who's never going to be on board. And then there's another segment who wants to be on board, but still can't grasp it, still can't really fully. They're going to be doubting it the whole time. There's all sorts of wiring going on. So, so it was the wiring of the brain that was really my big aha. It's that, you know, this is where Reality happens in the moment that we give meaning to a situation. This is how we define our experience of reality. And, and the meaning we give it is all about how we're programmed to, you know, we all look through the world through a different lens based on how we've been, you know, literally programmed. I, I, I hesitate to use the computer analogy because we are so much more than that. But the way that our brain works, it's just taking in all this information and it's growing these neural pathways. And we refer back to that. It happens automatically throughout our whole lives. And we get different information from another person than another person. We're going to see life in a different way. So the thing with the law of attraction, with all these techniques and vision boards and getting into the vibration, it's also nebulous and it's just so weird. And who knows? Like right. I like it, but but a lot of people, it's just they get so caught up in the am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? So my approach now is forget all of it. It's it's subtext because this is about if you want your life to be different, you need to be different because you will then act different, be different, take different action, get different results. You can't get different results if you keep doing the same thing. But for you to do something else you on a consistent basis and have it be effortless and just a natural extension of who you are, you got to change your wiring. So how do we change our wiring? Well, the same way we got it in the first place, repetition of the same ideas over and over. Because right now we're, we've been doing it unconsciously. It's just been coming in, we've been saying yes to this, yes to this. Now, as we get older, we develop a little more critical thinking, but at first, and some of the main foundations that determines how we make meaning later is established early and on autopilot and we didn't assess it. But now we know, science shows us very clearly that our brain can change. And it does all the time. Every time we learn a new thing, our brain's changing. So there's no debate. There's no debate that we can change our brain and there's no debate on how we get the information in there and how to change it. So we just have to give it new information. But that is the challenge because each of us as individuals is wired. And so we go there automatically. So we have to be super conscious and realize, oh, we're in response mode and make different choices. And most people will not be able to do that without some sort of support. And that's why personal development in general has such a high failure rate when people take on any sort of program or endeavor. They get a certain amount, their wiring kicks in, they rationalize stopping. And now they've got in their psyche, in their wiring, I failed again. This didn't work. This won't work for me. And it just mm, makes that wiring stronger and stronger. And yeah. it lessens the, the possibility that you're going to get a result from the next thing. And so what is that uh, uh, critical threshold to obtain, you know, fundamental transformation? So that it's like exercise, right? I mean, you, yes. you begin an exercise program, you start to, all right, you get a few results, and then all of a sudden you're 
going into the refrigerator, getting all the snacks and all the junk food and other things that are just uh, not going to help you get fit. And then you slide back to what you were. Right. right? Yeah. Because if, there, if you don't have accountability, if you have no support system, if you're not really tuned into why you're doing this in the first place, and there's all these factors that will pull you back into your old way. And then you start beating yourself up. Oh, I should know better than this. It's just this, this cycle. However, if you just can realize that all of that is not, none of that's true. It's just wiring and that you can change it. It gives you that flexibility. So what I do, the way that I work with people now is I put them in a 45 day we call it a challenge, but it's a 45 day program where every day they are incentivized to have these different thoughts, to catch themselves, to, to make, to do the critical things necessary to, to make the change permanent. So we, we gamify everything. We give them uh, a process in the morning and the evening to do, which is all about defining who they need to be to get the results they want, because there is a gap. I think we talked about it before. Or so there's where you are right now and you're taking the action you're taking and you're getting the results you're taking. If you want bigger, better, more, whatever it is. So you have to cl be clear on who do I need to be to get those results? Because it's magical thinking to think that I will just do the same thing and get different results. And we don't want that. That becomes woo woo and weird and it stops people. It's practical. Of course, we have to take different action to get different results. Of course. So what is that action? Well, we get to visualize that. Who do we need to be? Well, let's see it. What's the gap? Like, you look at your, I invite people to look at their day and look at the times that they get disempowered. Look at the times where they doubt themselves or get yeah. angry or whatever and go now, okay, this doesn't serve me. Like we teach them to get conscious in that moment. Okay. This reaction, which is wired, doesn't serve me. How would I like to better react? And so we get, we invite them to, to sort of forecast that in the morning and then review it in the after, in the evening. Like in the beginning of the day, we say what situation might happen. What do you see ahead of you that might trigger something that you would rather not feel? And then let's, let's play with it now. How would you like to respond? We have this brain that allows us to be able to visualize in advance and rehearse our responses so that when we get into, and we feel it and we do it over again and again and again, so that it's like we've done it. So that when it happens in real life, it's not like, oh, what do I do? You've done it. You did it 12 times this morning in your imagination. Now do it. And when you do it, there's no choice but for the response to be different. And yeah. that's where change begins. Yeah, that's when you can see the visible concrete kinds of results. It's interesting you said that. And I, for years, uh, getting into more the interpersonal, interpersonal aspects of creativity and innovation, anytime I would do a workshop, uh, I would remember often or recall often, I'd have clients just saying, oh, this is getting a little too touchy feely in the words that, the phrase that you use, woo, woo yeah. kind of thing. Uh, but what you're, you're suggesting is it's a more scientific approach, right? That it also creates in a, a level of accountability mm -hmm. that, you know, you, 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 so if I go to the gym, do you can stick with that metaphor? It's like, all right, I do the weights, but then I, I, I'm reflecting on the extent to which I did that well or poorly or how many repetitions. So I can see if I didn't perform well, I can adjust it the next time. So it's a combination of those repetitions, but also some reflection is what you're suggesting. Yes. Like just noticing where did I not behave in the way that I would like to behave and all of that. And yes, it's very much, it's very much like the gym. And be, especially because the way we do this, it's an everyday thing. You know, it's, we really have to keep people incentivized to do something every day. So like we have these audio programs that they do, everything's super short, everything's super short, like the, the like doing the process, uh, absorbing the content, if you will, of the program every day for these 45 days only takes maybe 10 minutes or so, but the rest of the day, is doing it not yeah. it's it's not see that's the problem with a lot of these things is people will do their personal development activities in the evening 30 minutes before it's got to be all day it's got to be constant yeah. otherwise it's Love not that. going to stick and that's just logical it's science it's practical and and the thing is the law of attraction will work automatically when you do this when you be who you're going to be and take that action, your vibration is going to take care of itself. Yeah. You will attract the things you need to track. You don't need to worry about any of that other stuff. It just is going to work. So now I use the law of attraction as more sub, you know, subtext. It's like, yes, this is going to happen. 
as a result of taking this action. It's way more action oriented. And, you know, because transformation, because rewiring is inherently uncomfortable. Every time we learn something new, we have to go through some level of discomfort, you know, learning to walk, learning to talk, learning anything. You make the mistakes and all that stuff. But somehow when it comes to personal transformation, we have this idea that just better work in the seven days, 21 days, whatever they said, Yeah, you know, or it's just, it's nonsense. Well, that's, see, that's the personal development industry setting everybody up for failure. There's no way any particular developer of a program can know for certain how long it's going to take for somebody to rewire themselves because they've got their whole lives of, of stuff to do. You know, the best we can do is to give them the information and get whatever we give them, whatever incentive we can to utilize it every day. Right. And so we use a point system an XP and we just give them dopamine hit after dopamine hit. We celebrate them in the group. You know, we do everything we can to make this process fun you know, and exciting. So you get that because when you go to the gym, even if you didn't want to go to the gym, when you've done with the gym, boy, do you feel good that you went to the gym. And so we do that every day so that people feel great about catching themselves, sharing that they caught themselves. We give them the incentive to acknowledge that they did it because if you don't, you can forget, you know, that you had a win in that area. So if we have them do it every single day, they can't, there's no denying. So they get into the habit of acknowledging that they are winning every day. So you can see what's going to happen. 45 days is a pretty long time. You know, yeah. there's various ideas about how long it takes to form a new habit, but 45 days, while I'm not promising anybody, you're going to be exactly the person you want to be the highest ideal. You will have discovered, you will have, you've learned the skill set you need to do it. Now it's just a matter of continuing to catch, continuing to redefine, continuing to, to build that vision and letting that old, diary, old wiring die on the vine. Because that's literally what it will do when you stop going back to your old stories about why this happened or didn't happen or what you can yeah. or cannot do. You have, to, you have to be willing to give up all of that. Because man, oh man, people cling to their stories about why they didn't get something or why it's not gonna happen for them, even though they say they wanna move forward, but they keep telling that freaking story. And every time they do it, they get into the emotion and they trigger that neuroplasticity and it just, it solidifies. And I'm saying, look, that's not who you wanna be, right? You don't wanna be a person who keeps telling your story over and over. Right. What are you looking for, validation? You know, we, that's another issue, let's fix that. You know, but you need to be the person who doesn't, you know, you, I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, I love that. And it sounds like, too, what gives it so much credibility, what you're saying is you experience that yourself, mm -hmm. you know, there's, you know, a moment in your journey, either the success of, of the early work that you did that was foundational. I almost liken it to my, my, my family's from Hungary. My parents are immigrants and they, there's a thing called the Dobos tort. You know, there's this layered, you know, hazelnut. It's just, you know, decadent kind of thing and you know when you look at the entire cake it's it's delicious it's beautiful and it's tasty but but there's many different layers and what you're talking about the early experiences that you had is the secret the law of attraction may have been one of the layering but it wasn't the complete story and that you found yourself in your journey at a time when maybe wait a minute this this is not really exactly the clothes i have i think there's something more how i want to express this even though the consistency of thought or experience that you might describe as the law of attraction is applicable. But what you did is took it into a, an altogether new direction that has enabled you to, you know, be successful professionally and also help others acquire some of those same kind of skills and, and, and tools, right? Yes, as I, I've shared with a couple of people, you know, that, you know, obviously 20 years in this industry, I've done a lot of transformation, I've done a lot of growth, a lot of evolution, all of that stuff, gotten clarity and redefined myself a zillion times and all of that. But once I, a couple of years ago, year and a half ago, when I really locked into this rewiring conversation and just decided that, you know, to, to focus on catching my own natural wiring and reactions, because I had plenty, I had plenty of triggers that would send me into a spiral. And I'm, so it was about like, I had, and I would cling to those stories, just exactly like I was talking about to justify things. And I realized I had to give all of that up. And as hard as it was, because my wiring had all this reason and logic why I should feel that way, I had to give all that up and have a different conversation. And I'm telling you, since I did that, it's, it's been such a different there. I could go on and on. Many of them are very personal, but because of the nature of this, but 
who I am now from a year and a half ago and how the lens through which I see the world and the peace I have in my body and the, the, the number, the, the diminishing of the, the daily reactions that would sometimes take me out of the game for two or three days that last a moment, if that now, because I just refused to go, because I learned from experience, 20 years of having those or however many years of having those types of reactions has not served me. To think right. that those that serves me is insane. So it's like, what, so to, to create, what would it be like to just be, to not react in this situation? And yes, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm seeing the same thing with all my students and people coming in the program. It's just so fast when you get away from all the weirdness. It's just direct. It's so simple. It's exactly how we learn. And all we're doing is just giving you some structure to do it so you won't bail. Right. And it sounds like there's, it all depends to the degree to which people come into your programs, uh, the, the level of rehabilitation, if you will, <laughs> that has to occur. Like, in other words, it's yes, 45 days is the right sort of uh, in, uh, immersion, it sounds like, to really get people to rewire. Um, but, but uh, you know, to reinforce that, I imagine, you know, depending on how severe the case is, and I don't want to necessarily diagnose it as a, a, a deep-seated uh, therapeutic problem for people necessarily, but it, it may vary from one person. to oh, one. Yeah. See, I mean, what I'm trying to do is create a habit of doing this so that after the 45 days, they continue to do it. Now they have options to stay in and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. or get coaching, obviously, if they want to take it up to a more personal level, you know, where it's more like I'm talking to them every day through this stuff, instead of it being sort of a program they're going through and they're getting yeah. coaching. So there's various levels of continuing this, this conversation, because yes, we absolutely do not want people to slip back into the old way. Cause you know, but at that point, they're going to know, like the, after 45 days of doing this, they're going to, they're never going to be able to not know that they have more control. So they're, they're going, it's going to be more of a conscious thing. They're not going to feel on it. They, they'll have to get rid of all their stories because they've, they've, they know too much. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And who's your typical uh, kind of client that you, you, cause you, uh, you know, you talked earlier, woohoo, not everybody sort of buys into it or gets it necessarily. So is you, do you have an ideal? Sort well, of I think product? honestly, the people who are coming to me now probably, you know, do have a background in, in the woo-woo conversation simply because it's easier to go find people who are, who know me from the secret and that kind of stuff. So they're sort of in that conversation. Right. And my Instagram, you know, I, where I talk a lot about this is Bob Doyle from the secret. So these people are going to be kind of in that conversation, but I think that there, a lot of those people are people who really, they're, they're dedicated to personal development. Yeah. They saw the secret or heard this stuff and there's something in there for them. They're like, yes, this speaks to me. I, I know that more is possible, but they're struggling with the whole law of attraction part of it. Not that they don't believe it or love it or whatever they do, but the, it's just all the other stuff is stopping them from actually doing the real work. And so that that's, that's who these people are. They've got, they, they've got goals for themselves. They got dreams for themselves. Many of them creative, but I mean, I've got people from all, all kinds of backgrounds who come into this thing. They just want to up-level their business. They want to up-level their creativity, whatever it is. You know, the, the challenge used to be, years ago, it used to be about uh, accomplishing a certain thing. Like I want to write this book in 45 days or I want it right. in this relationship and for whatever it is I want. But now it's more about developing that. And so now it's more of a teaching you to fish type of deal. Yeah, I get it. So, I yeah. And which is, is especially, I think, true in this day and age now, even more, if, if anything that we've learned through the uh, sign of the times, if you will, this uh, tumultuous uh, year that we've had collectively as a, a human species, I think, uh, if anything, I've observed both friendships and colleagues and family uh, uh, taking a time for that kind of pause a deeper level. So it's not just like you said, oh, I want to write a book or I want to sell X uh, number of units of a product that I'm trying to, to market, right? It's true because a lot of us have to radically redefine how we're being in the world just because the world is working differently these days. So it's like, okay, well, given who I am, how do I, what version of me do I need to create to, to survive and thrive in this new world? Yeah. Well, one of the things I really love about what you're doing as well. So uh, I, this is just an amazing kind of, uh, detailed description of the kind of the program and how you can really transform people in their lives through the, the program, really making the law of attraction applied, practical and actionable. 
Um, you do so many other cool things that I just like love the the voiceovers. The you're doing these like really wacky things that I, I'm very intrigued with the, the uh, avatar if you or whatever. I don't even avatar know. Avatar fly. Yeah, yeah, I have fly the those some of which are kind of creepy, but like <laughs> engaging nonetheless. Could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, that is my broadcast stuff coming out. So for to, to, to give people some context, Avatarify, yeah. there's a piece of software out there that basically allows you to take a still image of anybody's face and drive it with your mouth. So you put a webcam on you, it's a picture of this person uh, and you're talking, the eyes are moving and you know, it's, it's like Avatar, you're controlling them. And so for a person like me, and then there's all these apps that allow you to basically create human faces from scratch or modify them. And because I don't like to use pictures of real people because you know, you get in, you know, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> and even celebrities, you know, I'd rather take a celebrity and then use all these apps to just basically create a whole new person with whatever sort of features I want. And then I can use, uh, then, you know, I can create, I can use my voiceover abilities or whatever to give these characters, you know, voice and do these sketches. So it's like, I've got a whole cast of, of actors that I, that I can do, but it's all just faces and stuff like that. But it's, you know, it's yeah. about re creativity and doing it live. So what you've seen me do is go live and just, I'm running this program. You rarely ever see my real face. I'm just scrolling through all these other faces and I'm having them interact with each other. So there's no, I'm not changing anybody's life with this unless they're just into that kind of stuff. It's not about helping people get clear on their vision. It's just me being me expressing myself the way that like, you know, I love to do. It's not, it's just fun. It's just me yeah, expressing myself yeah, and giving me because I didn't. I just didn't allow myself to do that for no, so many no, years. No, it, it is great, great fun. I, I am. I feel very privileged to be one of the recipients of that. Uh, it's uh, uh, so often on these social media sites. It, it's either heavy duty kind of stuff that's going on, and I'm like, I'm not really that interested. I love the entertainment value and the creativity because it sounds like that's one of your missions, which resonates with. Uh, with my personal and professional goals as well is to really empower people to express themselves. So yes, I'm a, a, a in my and all my all my bios it says something about being a champion for creative self expression, because I really believe that that's what we all really want to do. We're here. We want to express ourselves. We want to be us fully, have the full human experience as we are as we desire it. I mean, we have these unique. All of us have these unique passions. We have these unique dreams and all of these things. And of course, we're here to do it. I could go on and on about that, but I mean, you know, it it's. It's natural for us to want to do these things and we can. We just have to be wired to do them. And if we don't get wired from the outside in because our parents or our teachers or our community has limiting beliefs themselves and they project them upon you and now you're there, then we have to hope that as adults, somebody comes along and says, hey, by the way, wake up. Right. You can, you can change this. It's not gonna be overnight, okay? But if you create a vision that is really freaking amazing and inspiring, I mean, you need to create a vision that's worth it. If yeah. you don't do that, I mean, why would you do it? But but to, to, to know, and I think a lot of people hesitate to do that because they think, well, I'll never achieve it. But what I'm saying is it just is time and action. That's between you and your goal. You may need to learn some things. Yeah. You may need to meet some people. You, you know, yeah, things have to happen, but you can do it. If anybody did it, guess what? You can, right? So it's, it's like you just, but again, you have to want it that bad. You have to know that this is a part of who you are. And like, I used to coach people to say, you know, you have to be able to answer the question, why must I do this? If you're going to make a radical change like that, because the wiring in your, every part of your wiring is going to have you stop, you know, but if you can get to why must I do this, hit that emotional core value, you can override that. And my hunch is uh, with somebody like yourself, because I, it's so self-evident, I'm picking up on your great energy and, uh, is that your wiring is evolving also, right? Mm -hmm. it, you know, so it's not just rewiring, but it's, you know, I injecting some other sort of other fuse or energy uh, that may be influenced by experiences or just taking risk or meeting other people, right? Yes, and I think allowing that to, you know, making the choice to go with it and to grow. You know, I, I, I stayed kind of in this one zone for, a while and was kind of like uncomfortably comfortable, which is what this defines, I think, a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, you know, but then I got too uncomfortably uncomfortable. 
And that's what it's always historically for me. It's like, I got to be pushed to the freaking brink for some reason. Like I just got to not be able to stand it another second and then I'll do the thing, whatever the thing is. <laughs> I don't recommend that it's optional and that's some wiring that I could change. Right. right. But, but at, at, at the same time, it, it makes me some, sometimes uniquely qualified to teach this stuff because I almost, I mean, there's hardly anything I teach that I haven't gone through myself in a sure. brutal way, one way or the other, you know, otherwise I, I just don't like to, to be that guy. I yeah. like to talk from my own personal experience and not theorize too much, which is another thing about the law of attraction, which is frustrating because, you know, because of its nature, it's a lot of theory. It's a lot of theory that I absolutely believe and, and know to know to be true. It's like there's just yes. a certain. Yes, obviously, but it's not that obvious to everybody and trying to get it obvious is I realized a waste of time. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. No, you've gone from knowing to doing in. Uh... Congratulations. It's like awesome, extraordinary work you're doing and in, in inspiring others. And I love how you as a human being are evolving toward that. And where can people find out more about you, Bob? Uh, all these delicious and wonderful and exciting things that you're involved with that will help people. Yeah, so I think th it, there's two ways uh, that I would recommend right now. One is if they're into this conversation around wiring and they'd like to kind of, you know, work on that themselves. I have this quiz that I invite people to take. It's, it takes less than a minute to do, but it's, it's called the transformation personality type quiz. And because I've you know, learned over 20 years that there are different types of people who approach transformation. And there are aspects of some of those types that can stop you. You know, that, that's the reason you don't finish or the sabotage pops up. But if you know number one about neuroplasticity and that you can change things and you know what your current type is, then you can learn to recognize the behavior when it happens and make another choice. You realize, oh, I, I'm on autopilot right now mm -hmm. and you can make different choices. So if they go to tptquiz.com, they can take that quiz in 60 seconds and get some good information there. And then otherwise, I'm super easy to find. I, I've got meetbobdoyle.com, which is, it's gonna be different than what you saw because we're, we're working on it. Uh, changing it, updating it to the, the new conversation. Um, and that, that, that will give you links to most of what I'm up to. And of course, Facebook, YouTube. Oh my God, I'm just everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous. Good for you. It's great being friends. I really am so uh, uh, happy that you could come on my show. Uh, you know, th there's a saying, if you, if you change, you know, if you change the, the uh, form of your mind, it never re returns to its original form. So if mm -hmm. you start to shift that, well, I definitely like this has been really a scintillating conversation. I'm like thinking about some of my uh, uh, reflections on patterns of behavior and ways in which I can sort of rewire myself. And then, and secondly, you really spark some ideas in terms of how I can make the law of attraction more actionable for myself and my business and in my life. And I know my audience will uh, benefit as well. So thank you for sharing the wisdom. Thank you for being on my Consulting Unplugged. Look forward to staying in touch and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you too. It's my pleasure. All right. You take care. Hey there. Thanks for listening to this podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it and obtained some valuable insights. Please be sure to post and share your comments and like this podcast on whatever platform you were using. And above all else, please do not hesitate to subscribe to our mailing by visiting us at consultingunplugged.com. And there you will get exclusive updates and promotions on our new programs, tools, and forthcoming podcasts designed to help you build the power skills to deliver impact. Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Cheers.